welcome to the Digital Nomad YouTube channel and podcast. Uh, I'm about to go on a 10 day trip to Portugal, staying in an Airbnb. Um, so this is my packing list. So this is the first part of it. I'm a, a minimalist traveler. I like to take a small carry on bag only. And the way I achieve that is by um, sort of miniaturizing lots of things I travel and really thinking about what I travel with but i don't really miss out on anything so let's start going through the list so these are toms these are espadrilles which is kind of a lightweight canvas style shoe if you ever seen the tv show in the 80s called miami vice one of the main characters wore espadrilles a lot and this is by toms so every time you buy a pair of their espadrilles they give a pair of shoes to someone in need in the world which is obviously good um, they're just a great pair of lightweight shoes they're smarter than flip-flops in a hot place but they're also more breathable and lighter weight so it's a great sort of hot weather shoe then we come on to the flip-flops um these are havianas you might have seen people use these i think they're the most popular flip-flops in the world they're really good they're from brazil obviously brazilians are going to know a lot about flip-flops um and the great thing about these is they're lightweight they're ultra simple you can find them in any country in the world they're not that expensive uh, one tip i would give on these though is i always now when i go traveling even if it's a short trip I always take a brand new pair of Havanas with me because um, I've had trips in the past where they've broken um, shortly after leaving or in the middle of the trip and then you've got to find somewhere selling them. Now, if there's one brand of flip-flops you can find almost anywhere in the world, it's Havanas um, or maybe Ipanema, which is an equivalent brand. But then you've got to find the shop, you've got all the hassle of going to it and maybe they don't have the right sides or the right one. So if you take brand new flip-flops with you at the start of the trip, um, it's always this part here that breaks. And then they're unlikely to break during a trip, unless you're going for more than six or 12 months, which is normally how long they last. This here is a new addition to my travel bag. This is a collapsible day pack. Um, and this is great if you um, want to, it's just a little backpack. If you want to um, go hiking or take a pack out for some reason in the day, or just take a bottle of water and some other stuff with you, um, then this, this opens up into, um, just a small, very lightweight pack. And it's super useful to have um, because it means you don't have to take your full pack with you for the whole day. Um, so that, um, super lightweight, it's a small addition to the bag, but yeah, often during the day, you don't want to take your full pack with you and that's really useful for that. So also for shopping, it's really good as well. So highly recommended. And then onto the toiletries. So obviously deodorant, but smaller than usual. Hair products, um, mints breath freshener which is useful moisturizer and going to a hot country so it's good for after sun this is a uh, eau de toilette or aftershave atomizer which is super useful so rather than taking the full thing i've decanted it to a smaller bottle same with the hair products rather than taking the full size hair products put it in a smaller container this is a what 60 milliliter so remember all the liquids have got to be below 100 mil to take carry on on the plane this is mosquito spray but it's not deet now, I don't know how much you know about DEET, but DEET is a very effective mosquito repellent. But the problem with it is it's quite oily, quite smelly. It's like an industrial chemical. And I was spraying some DEET on myself in India, but I was sitting below a fan and it blew onto my laptop at the time, which was made of plastic, and it melted the plastic. So I'm not saying DEET will melt your face, but it is kind of an unpleasant substance. This is called Saltadin. And there's a few different names for it, but it was invented in Europe later on, I think in the 90s or something. And this had, this is as effective against mosquitoes as DEET, but it's a much more pleasant substance. So this is what I get now. I'm not sure if I'm going to take that to Portugal in April because I don't know how big of a mosquito problem there'll be. But we'll see how how um, filled the, full the bag is. And if I do some research on that, I might see how big the problem mosquitoes will be. Um, unfortunately, it's going to rain every day, apparently, which is brilliant. But, you know, what can you do? Toothbrush, um, Curaprox, ultra soft toothbrush, kind of a, re a religion around that. I highly recommend them because people are too hard when they brush apparently. Uh, this is shampoo and shower gel all in one um, and just in a 50 milliliter container. Now, some people might find that difficult, um, but especially if you're only going for 10 days, you don't need to take these huge bottles of shampoo and shower gel or uh, conditioner, whatever you need. Um, if you must take separate ones, Get small bottles like this. Now, these are available in a lot of places, but a lot of these things here 
come from a Japanese shop called Muji. It's one of my favorite stores. And I noticed this in Japan as well. Everything is thought about. They think about attention to detail in the product design. Um, and there's so many great little travel products in Muji that I highly recommend it. Um, and that's where this bottle came from. So yeah, if you can just manage with small <coughs> shampoo and gel gel like that, it's great. What I often find is I can just top that up. If I'm staying in a hotel, I can top it up with whatever's in the hotel. If I'm staying in a hostel, often they'll have them as well. Um, so you really don't need to take a lot of shampoo and shower gel. It's, it's, you, I'll let you into a secret. Shampoo and shower gel exists in every country. It's not difficult to get. So because I'm going for 10 days, I've got these small tubes of toothpaste. Now, if I was going for more than a month, I'd just take a normal false ties toothpaste. But these ones, you can probably get about seven days out of each one. So if you're going on a shorter trip, it's just a great way to cut weight. And of course, once one runs out, you can throw it away. So it just allows you to minimize your pack and the same again sun cream you don't need a big thing of sun cream for 10 days that's more than enough here obviously my passport now this is in a sleeve because my previous passport um i kept it in a similar bag to this and it just rubbed to the front of it and it didn't even have the country or anything on it so just to keep it a bit protected um i keep it in this this is also our an our anti-rf container i think um modern passports can be read with a reader like a contactless payment card. So this, this container um, stops that happening. I don't know if that's a big problem, really. I just use it to protect it, but there we go. This is a money belt. And in this, I keep spare credit cards and my passport in here, a bit of spare cash. And this one is designed to go around the neck, um, but I wear it around my waist, just off to one side. Now you can get money belts that are designed to go around the waist, but when you sit down, it's in the middle and it, it kind of crunches the crotch area a bit. And uh, I'm not looking to have my crotch area crunched. Um, and for some reason, this one, if you put it off to the left, it's just much more comfortable. Now I don't know why no one's invented a money belt that's designed to go around the waist. That's this shape that you can put off to one side. I can't even remember how I came up with this system, but it just works really well for me. So I'd highly recommend that. I think it's Go Travel or something is the brand. Now onto the obligatory masks, still in COVID now. And I have a, a selection of three masks here. This is an FFP2. They'd normally be white or KN95 or N95, they're often known as. That would often be white. Um, but I just prefer the, the look of black stuff, as you may have noticed. Um, so this is the type of mask that's mandatory to wear in the Czech Republic at the moment where I live. So I need to have one of these on me. This is from uh, Muji, which is another Japanese shop, which is a different, sorry, not Muji. Uh, this is Uniqlo, which is another Japanese shop, um, kind of similar to Muji, but just this is just fashion oriented really, whereas Muji has home products and furniture and stuff. And this is a beautifully designed mask as well. Um, for some reason, I've got a massive head, and uh, this one seems to fit me a bit better. It's just very comfortable. This one is a gaiter or a snood, whatever you want to call it. It goes around your neck. The great thing about snoods is they're kind of multi-purpose. So if you're if you're in a, a sunny place, um, you can put this around your neck. It will stop the sun, stop you getting sunburnt on your neck, or at least your whole of your neck. If it gets cool in the evening... Um, this keeps you a bit warmer. It's surprisingly effective for that. It can actually keep you quite warm. And then it's always around your neck, so you don't have to take it off. Like you have to take these masks off. So you can just pop it up if you go in a shop. And it's great. It's a really versatile item. And these three things are quite lightweight. Maybe I'll leave one of them here, but I think I'm going to take all of them with me. And this is a book I found in The Globe, which is an English language bookshop in Prague which I, I normally don't read paper books. I'll either read the ebook or more often than not uh, audio books, which I'm really into because you can listen to an audio book when you're watching up, when you're walking around town. And you can get through a lot more books that way. But I just loved the look of this little book. If I can fit it in my pack, I'm going to take that with me. Quite prescient for the time, I think, all in truth. Um, so this is, I've got this on eBay. This is designed to keep, I think, football boots or shoes in. But I use this to put all of the stuff in my bag that's not in another container. We'll go in that just to keep it together. So these, um, this footwear here goes in this bag. The toiletries here go in a toilet bag. Um, and then all of that will go in here. And actually, this is one thing I haven't mentioned here, which is earplugs. Now this is just, it looks like one earplug here, but you just break that in two and it goes in each ear. 
This is, uh, these are silicone earplugs, which I cannot recommend enough. If you're in a noisy place, like I was in a hostel in Ukraine, I was getting four hours sleep a night. Stumbled across silicone earplugs. Um, I think they're called jacks or something. Uh, but often you'll, you'll get them for swimming actually. And um, put them in instantly, eight hours sleep a night. It, it was amazing. It, it was kind of life changing at the time. Because if you're not getting enough sleep, it's terrible. So highly recommended uh, silicone earplugs. Absolute game changer. Um, so yeah, so this this shoe bag here, all the other stuff goes in that that, that doesn't go in another compartment of the bag. But this is uh, an absolute key part of how I travel so light, but still um, bring a decent amount of clothes with me. It's a compression sack. Now, if you've seen how um, the bags that sleeping bags come in, you stuff the sleeping bag in and then you pull the, slaps, the straps closed. That compresses the sleeping bag down to say a third of the size. You can do exactly the same thing with clothes. Now you wouldn't want to do this with um, smart shirts or maybe a smart skirt or dress or something, but everything else like t-shirts, underwear, that can all go in there and it can save you a lot of space in your bag to the point where you can bring a smaller bag. And it might even take you down from having to check a bag to being able to bring carry-on only. Once you've gone carry-on only, that can save you a lot of money um, that you have to pay to check in bags often now. And it means you can leave the airport immediately. It's just a much better way to travel. Now here we have another compression sack. Um, this one I use just for a waterproof jacket and a hoodie or um, lightweight jacket, something like that. Um, and again, that's a smaller one, but again, it just... You can compress them down a bit and it takes less room in the bag. Now these two things here are actually, I don't know if you can tell, they're mesh bags. This one I put my underwear in, this one I put dirty clothes in, and these go into the compression sack. The reason they're mesh bags and they're not um, they're kind of airtight or plastic bags, firstly I don't travel with any like supermarket plastic bags anymore. I used to do that. The problem with that is, as well as you looking like a homeless guy, um they're extremely loud if you get if you have to get um if you have to pack your bags early in the morning in a hostel and um, because you have to get an early flight you have to leave early or even if someone's just asleep in the room they're very noisy and you'll wake people up and um, so that's bad also they'll just wear out after a while also if if your dirty clothes or even your underwear is in an airtight container like a plastic bag it gets quite musty but because these are mesh um, they're lightweight, they're thin, but also it lets your clothes breathe. So it really does make a big difference. That's highly recommended. And you can get these in Ikea pretty cheaply. So I think I've covered um, this set of stuff. So I'll now go on to uh, the next set of things. So on to the gadget section. And as you can see, there's a few gadgets here. I'll go through them one by one. This is a gadget bag. Um, in this, I put a lot of this stuff. So I'll go through this stuff. Um, this is a really good pair of nail clippers from Muji. I'll keep that in the gadget bag. Um, it's very thick, very reliable, lasted for years. I find it really hard to find nail clippers on the road and I've tried a few times. This is a stand for an iPhone. You just put it together and uh, you can watch movies and stuff on your iPhone. This is a SIM tool. This is a tool that lets you charge via lightning and plug in a USB item. The reason I want to do that is because I have this uh, incredible device here. This is a a uh, Dragonfly Cobalt. It's a DAC that you plug into your uh, iPhone or uh, computer and it will play high resolution music. So I have a service called Cobuds and it plays the music on that. Into this I plug these wired Shure SC535 earphones. The, the difference in sound quality is incredible. So if you're a bit of an audiophile like me, you like good sound quality, I recommend this setup. This is a micro SD uh, card reader to USB-A. That's also useful for this, my new uh, GoPro, which I'll be using to do vlogging with. Um, in there we have a SmartLav Plus Rhodes um, lav mic, a Movo shotgun mic, um, and the three-way stand. And this goes on the media mod case, which is here. But I'm actually using, probably gonna use one of these mics. This is the case for the headphones. This is the case for my MV88 Shure microphone. Can't show you that because I'm using it now plugged into my iPhone. Uh, this is an Apple Watch charger. So a charger for this. This is a Dell XPS 2-in-1 13-inch laptop. 
great for traveling but i probably will be now apple's releasing m1 max which are ridiculously fast i'll probably be changing that to a mac changing back to a mac in the near future airpod pros amazing Air noise cancelling so uh, you can use the noise cancelling on flights works really well on trams everything so much better than standard airpods this is just a temperature and humidity sensor in the room you're in so rather than using an app to see the humidity and temperature outside it'll tell you what it is in the room you're in and that, that can be quite interesting this is something I found, it's just a mini Frisbee that I found on Amazon, I think it was. I'm going to test that out in Portugal, see if it's any good. Shaw sunglasses, uh, Shaw. Sure. Um, Oakley sunglasses, this is the bag for them to clean them, and this goes in a hard case just to keep it protected. I'm a big fan of Oakley. Um, they've got really good lenses, and these wrap around a bit, so <clears throat> I prefer performance over style, although I think they look fine. Minimalist wallet from theminimalist.com. Um, this is a Tide stain stick. This has saved my life a few times. If you spill stuff on yourself, and, you know, we all do it, you can dab it off and then use this stain stick and it just makes it vanish. It, it's, it's saved many pieces of clothing I've got. Simple anchor USB battery for emergencies. I do have more, much bigger USB batteries with power delivery, etc. But for this trip, I don't expect to be away for power that long. And my phone got an iPhone 12 Pro Max, so the battery on that's great. So I'd, I don't expect to need a bigger battery, but I do have them available. Um, this is a just a little USB headset I've got um, because I keep that paired to my laptop. I find it awkward pairing AirPods with my laptop because if I'm listening to music on my phone or listening to something on my phone, the laptop will kick it off. So I have that just for calls. This is a, a great little charger. I use this charger for all the equipment I've got with me. It's a USB power delivery charger. It can actually charge my laptop and my phone and two other items at the same time. You can, depending on the country you're in, you can just bring a different lead with you. I'm going from Czech Republic to Portugal, so they both use this Euro lead. This is a USB-C to USB-C. This is a USB-C to Lightning for the iPhone. This is for the laptop. And this can go USB-A to uh, micro USB, USB-C or USB or lightning. So these two have a lot of flexibility in what you can plug them into. So between all of these, this is a tiny, very lightweight charger, goes up to uh, 45 watt uh, laptops. Absolutely amazing what you can do with the charger now. That's the only charger I have. Super good. This is a dongle for the laptop. I'm not sure if I'm going to take that, probably will. This is just a lint-free cloth to, to wipe the screen with. This is an amazing um, Denon Bluetooth speaker. Sounds absolutely incredible. It's a little on the larger side, but because I'm staying in an Airbnb, I'm likely to be using that a lot. If I was just staying in hostels, I wouldn't take because I very rarely use a USB speaker when I'm staying in hostels. Um, and then obviously the Apple Watch. I avoid taking this to more dangerous places. I didn't take it to South America a couple of years ago. Southeast Asia would be borderline. Maybe I'd take it but not wear it all the time, but that, that does make you a bit of a target for theft. I think in Portugal I'll be fine. And so I think, yep, yeah, that's, that's all the gadgets. So see you in the next video. Now I'm looking at clothes, and um, I, as I say, I like to travel light, so I don't have that many clothes. Um, the main way I get around this is I just hand wash stuff in my compression sack that I um, mentioned earlier. Um, hand washing is so easy. I've had so many clothes ruined by places washing them and leaving them in the dryer for two hours or colors running and stuff like that. You can hand wash all of your clothes in a compression sack or in a sink. Put the stuff in there, put soap in there or shower gel in there, agitate it warm water, come back in five minutes, agitate again, come back in five minutes, rinse twice, done. You've got clean clothes and there's actually studies to show that clothes washed um, by hand are actually much cleaner than clothes washed in a machine because your hands can get in there and really agitate things. So I don't think you need that many clothes and if you actually, if the fewer clothes you take, you can, you'd be amazed what percentage of your bag is clothes, like it's at least half the bag is clothes. So if you really cut down your clothes, you can take a lot less stuff with you. So I'll just quickly go through what I've got here. Four t-shirts, obviously, short sleeve shirt, long sleeve shirt. This is a, a a summer trip. I won't bother ironing them now because um, they may get creased in the back. So I might iron these when I get there. Um, this is a three-layer waterproof Patagonia jacket. 
Um, that's it is definitely going to rain. So um, and that's that's going to be used. This is a great a great um, thing I found on um, eBay or I think it was Amazon, and it's a belt with a huge hidden compartment down the inside. Um, I bought several of these and I always wear them. I like it. it's a really nice minimal belt, but also you can put uh, emergency cash in there, emergency passwords or password hints. I don't have any actual emergency passwords in there, but I've got hints for stuff that if all my stuff got stolen and I just had that those hints, I'd be able to log into things online and start uh, getting stuff back online and ordering replacement cards, etc. So that's that belt's just really good. And you can put stuff in there like headache tablets, like I get headaches, um, and other useful stuff, mints, other useful stuff to have. In here, I just have enough underwear for four or five days. That's really all you need. Again, you can easily hand wash it. I'm going away for 10 days, so I'll just do one wash in the middle. This is the um, the toiletries I looked at earlier. That's a wash bag from the Japanese shop Muji. It's a great little min minimal wash bag. And of course, because it's clear, you can put that through airport security. This is a Mission Workshop pair of three-way stretch shorts. Absolutely amazing shorts. Um, they've got a hidden pocket here as well which um, is useful for keeping your money in or just keeping stuff out of the way. Um, just super comfortable because they have that three-way stretch. Um, can't recommend them enough, enough. This is just a cheaper pair of shorts as a change, I think from Topshop or something. And this is a pair of um, Uniqlo three-way stretch trousers as well. And these shorts are also stretched. Like all of, I've got quite chunky legs. Like All of my um, trousers and shorts now are stretch and it's so much more comfortable so i highly recommend that so this is just just these are um this is all the clothes i'm taking oh and a a merino i'll probably take a, an all sense merino hoodie as well uh, which isn't here right now but yeah, it's just a, a small amount of clothes you don't you really don't need to take a lot of stuff with you something else i'm taking is these shorts which are super useful again um, I found these and just bought five pairs of them and they've just been my steady shorts for ages. They're very thin. You could swim in them. You can run in them. You can play sport in them. You can wear them around the house or the hostel. They have a compartment at the back there, which is super useful for putting keys in and a couple of zipped pockets at the side. So I go running in these. I just put my iPhone in one pocket. Um, I've had the pockets modified so it doesn't bounce around, but you could um, you can just stuff some socks in there and it stops it bouncing around. You put your key in the back pocket. Just a perfect pair of shorts, very lightweight, simple, super useful to have on the road. And this is the Merino wool All Saints hoodie, which is um, Merino is like a miracle material that keeps you warm when it's cool, and but it doesn't get too hot and it wicks the moisture. So it's good for um, winter sports and things like that. So here is the Merino wool hoodie I was talking about. Um, it's fairly smart, but Merino is a great material because... Um, it's very breathable, uh, doesn't um, sweat, bacteria can't actually live in it, so it doesn't smell. You don't need to wash it that often, but you probably should, but it's good that it doesn't smell. It's good for um, if you're doing ac activities in the cold weather when you're going to sweat, but it's cold outside because it keeps you warm. But if, if you get hot, it, it moisture wicks and it doesn't, um, you won't overheat too quickly either, and it's very soft. These are the great running shorts I was talking about, super useful. Pocket in the back there for keys, then two zip pockets at the side. I put my iPhone in one of those and go running in it, wear them around the hostel or the house. Just super useful thing to have, very lightweight and small. This is a Mission Workshop. Um, I've got two Mission Workshop bags, a Rummy, it looks like it needs cleaning there. It's a Rummy and their smaller model, which I've forgotten about. I think this is the smaller one. Um, I think it's 23 litres, so this is, this is a pretty small bag. It'll go under... Um, an airplane seat in front so I just carry this on put it under the seat in front done um, then you know checking bags just isn't worth it if you've got a relatively small amount of stuff it's fine if you're only bringing about five days worth of clothes there's no reason to have a bigger bag than this uh, I also take a laptop with me I'm taking a GoPro with me all fits in there fine